but this is just a variation of a macaroni salad that I have made multiple times with my kids growing up on the farm and having so many of their friends and families and picnics out there. Now I get to do it with Chris and some of our friends and, but this makes macaroni salad to me, it's like potato salad. It makes great, um, uh, what is that word? Why can't I remember that word when everyone gathers and brings a din? Potluck, oh my goodness, potluck. Makes for a great summer potluck, picnics, gatherings, family reunions, holidays. Anyway, macaroni salad, so give it a try. Thank you for joining me in my little kitchen. So gather around my island and let's do some summer cooking. I'm doing something very traditional. In fact, uh, everyone has their own flair to making this particular summer salad dish. And I mix it up each and every time I make it. But the one basic thing that kind of stays the same is the pasta because we're making macaroni salad and the dressing that you put along with it and so um summer's here so get out those barbecues go on a picnic gather with family and friends in your backyard or picnic at a park or whatever like that i think one of the best ways to serve macaroni and cheese uh, macaroni and cheese macaroni salad is buying a, a a black bowl with a lid on it or any bowl with a lid and then just set it in your cooler so it stays cool because obviously most likely this will have mayo in it mayonnaise and uh you don't want that sitting out for a couple hours you know in the heat and stuff like that so that's usually what i do is i'll find a bowl a glass bowl with a lid and then i'll just set it on some ice in a cooler or some other container where the macaroni salad is just by itself or otherwise so anyway, and then I'm doing some chicken. So chicken, chicken is a tough one. In fact, let me get this on. Uh, uh, chicken is a tough one when grilling. I'm, I'm not the best at grilling. I, I will admit that, but I try and give, you know, I give it a try a lot. Uh, so anyway, in fact, Chris and I just came back from a short, really quick motorcycle ride, which is really fun. We were gone like maybe an hour and a half, maybe two or something like that. Anyway, it was really cool. It was such perfect weather. The sun's out, the temperature was great. And it just reminds me of, you know, how I like doing that with them is riding the motorcycle. But uh, for the chicken, so I keep trying. So what I'm going to do is let this cook because the mistake that a lot of people do, and I'm one of them, is that we often you know, put the chicken on the grill and about five minutes later, we're putting barbecue sauce on it. And the thing that's really charring or burning or whatever you want to call it is the sugar content within the barbecue sauce. So usually you want a salt and pepper or something else on your chicken. Uh, maybe sear the skin side a little bit and then uh, put it on the low part of your grill and then close the lid, and then the heat will continue to flip it over. The heat will continue to cook the chicken. And then when before, and you wanna keep flipping it over because obviously the heat for the chicken, I know I'm going from macaroni salad to grilling chicken. Um, the heat will obviously cook the underside, so that's why you wanna flip it uh, often enough, you know, maybe two or three times, uh, so that each side gets that, you know, uh, direct heat, but you don't need it on the direct heat you can kind of put it like in the middle so it's got the low and a little bit of high and the middle is kind of the blend of the two anyway that's what i'm hoping that my chicken will not dry out this is bone in the skin's on the underside this is bone in skin on chicken breast uh i think my dad did a lot of grilling and i think he really used chicken thighs which is a good uh alternative uh piece of meat, piece of chicken to do as well. Um, for some reason, I like chicken breasts. I'm bound and determined. Uh, when I cook, depending on what I'm cooking, uh, skinless, boneless chicken, I'll usually marinate it. Buttermilk wonders. In fact, 
I've got this uh, recipe coming out. You guys may find it on the site already before you find this one, but it's called a uh, coconut uh, crusted chicken. Uh, what am I calling it? Coconut crusted chicken with veggies. It's really lettuce and some vegetables. Uh, it was really, really good with this nice um, dressing on it. Um, used a little bit of coconut milk. Well, anyway, who cares about that one? That That's another recipe um, that'll be coming out on the site. But anyway, I love macaroni salad. I really like a good potato salad, but whether it's macaroni salad or potato salad, I prefer that it's not slathered with the dressing where the potatoes or the macaroni is swimming in the dressing. Like it's too much, it's too heavy. So we'll see how I do this. Since I'm the only one that likes macaroni salad, Chris is gonna give it a try. It's so funny. He likes hot pasta. Pasta should not be cold, but he likes potato salad. And I asked him, well, shouldn't potatoes be hot, but you like potato salad? He goes, well, I really like potato salad when it's just, you know, done cooking and all the dressing and, you know, stuff like it's cooled down a little bit and all the seasonings, dressing and, you know, stuff like that get in it. But I don't like it really cold. I thought, hmm, very interesting. Uh, so potatoes, because come on, Chris is from Idaho. Um, but macaroni salad is more iffy. So we'll see if he likes this one. And the other thing is, number one, I don't like a potato salad or macaroni swimming in a dressing, but I also don't like it overly sweet as well. I mean, there'll be a hint of it, but I don't want an overly savory thing either, but I just don't like want it sweet. So let's see what we can do here. I think I've got most of my ingredients here. Oh, in fact, I should get a little bowl for the dressing. Okay, I'll be back. Okay, because the noodles are a little sticky. I'm gonna put the dressing on first and then in incorporate these vegetables here. But look at how much macaroni this makes. This is only one pound box. This is like a half a pound. This is like plenty for, you know, maybe four people. So a whole box will definitely feed a family, enough for a family gathering, because you know other people are bringing their favorite salads to uh, cook out. Okay, so what are we gonna do here? I'm doing a little bit of sweet pickles, Gershom, little sweet pickles here. I might incorporate a little bit, did I throw it out? Oh no, I didn't. I might in incorporate a little bit of the pickle juice within the dressing, so we'll see about that. In fact, I'm gonna get another bowl to put all my veggies in it. So that way I can add it all at once. So I'm just gonna cut up these Gershom. And these are tiny, so you don't need a lot of them. I, did, I just cut up three. Oh, and I hard, hard boiled two eggs. I'm hoping these turned out, but I steamed them. I have found that steaming is the way to go. Not boiling them in water, steaming them. So we'll see. Well, did, did I cut these up enough? So we're just gonna do a rough chop on here. Yeah, I'll, I'll do all of them. So I really had like three little, and when I say little, look at the palm of my hand. Three, I have three here and I just did three. So six little Gershom pickles. Now you might find them bigger in a jar, but I don't know, these just happen to be small. And I think some of the herbs that will go in here, I'm debating whether to put dill in here. Might be a conflicting um, uh, herb. But I definitely want some parsley. In fact, I forgot to get it from the grocery store. I had a list too, and I forgot to get parsley. I go through so much parsley. I tell you, if I had a little more property, I would have some raised beds. I would definitely have probably six raised beds just of herbs. Basil, parsley, thyme, oregano, 
What else do I have out there? Oh, I love chives and then rosemary. Um, those are like the main ones that I use so much. Um, I was going to put some red onion in here, but since I'm doing radishes, I decided not to do the red onion and go with the green onion. So I'm doing radishes. Radishes are in. One thing about summer salads, you are really incorporating your farmer's market, or if you have an opportunity to have your own vegetable garden. I mean, oh my goodness. The one thing I love is capri salads, like some with your cherry tomatoes, sliced in half mozzarella with some fresh basil. Oh, just delish. Sometimes chopping up these radishes. And because I have like regular sized macaroni here, they're not the big noodles. You know, I want bite size. You know, these are kind of small. And um, they still got a little bit of chew on it because you want the macaroni to hold up. You don't want it too mushy, overdone. But you don't quite want it al dente either because you know, you don't want people thinking that uh, because you're not cooking this any further. So it's that really sweet spot just before it becomes too mushy, but still has a little bit of a bite. Okay, that's one radish. This is two. Okay. I think I'm going to go with three. This has a little brown spot on it. I, I don't know, I really like uh, radishes. They have like a, not a peppery taste, but they, they, you know, they, they have a, they have a little bite to it. It's, I, I like radishes, they're good. I wasn't able to go to the farmer's market this weekend because, man, I don't know what happened. I was not feeling very well. We were invited to a local concert at the, at the Cultural Arts Center downtown uh, Hillsboro here. A friend of mine, you know, had extra tickets and asked us to go. Gosh, I felt so horrible because I said, oh yeah, like I said, yes, Tuesday. And then, you know, I wasn't feeling well at all. Like I was laying on the couch or in bed almost all day. Um, I was getting sick. My gut hurt, and I thought, oh man, I hope this goes away the next day. Well, it didn't. I was beginning to get better, but I had no energy. I just was not feeling it, and I felt so bad. I had to text him and say, I am so sorry that Chris and I cannot go to this concert, and I, I just felt bad. I'm going to have to email him again and just say, I'm so sorry. I hope the concert was good. We were so looking forward to it. It's one of those things when someone invites you kind of last minute and you say yes and then you back out, then they're wondering, oh, what, something better came along or you said yes, I could have given these tickets and I really don't want him to think that because that's not how I roll. Anyway, so I got some, um, and I'm going to do a little bit of celery. You've got this really soft pasta and I'm slicing them kind of thin, not big, huge chunks. I don't know, these are just some of the things I, from my memory anyway, I grew up either making or remembering, you know, my grandmother making macaroni salad or, now I grew up, my, at, at least this was my mom's thing. I grew up with Miracle Whip. And if you've ever had Miracle Whip, you know that's, that already has just a tinge of sweetness to it compared to just regular mayo. So I used a regular, uh, no, I used Miracle Whip a lot back in the day when I was back home in Michigan. And tell you too, that it's not a lot of salary because you know, you want the macaroni, but you want some of these flavors, these veggies to incorporate. In fact, I don't know. Is this enough? Hmm. I 
can't do another radish. Well, let me cut up the uh, red pepper first. I'm gonna cut out some of this white part in here. You know what I was always envious of? People, you know, with average size hands, you know, you guys who are average height with, you know, average size hands, you guys can use the paring knife like this. Number one, my thumb is not long enough. I don't have a lot, lot of dexterity in these. So a lot of times when I'm slicing apples or carrots or something like this, I'm like really old school or my old school. I, I usually have to go like this. I cannot, you know, go like this. I, I, it's just not long enough. I'm too, it scares me. I'm too afraid I'm gonna cut my finger off. Even when I cut, even going like this, I don't know, I, I just don't feel like I either don't do it right or I don't have the, uh, I don't have the fingers. <laughs> so this was basically uh, half, maybe a third of a red pepper. Now, if I did one pound of um, pasta here, I thought I had a lot of different kind of like curly noodles besides the elbow, and I was gonna mix. I think that's cool too. If you're gonna make a pasta salad, have different kinds of pasta in here. You know, the little curly cues or the corkscrew one. Now the corkscrew pasta is a little heavier than the elbow one. Um, but maybe your mini penne pasta. Anyway, I, I just think that's a little interesting. That creates a little different texture in your pasta salad, which I think is pretty cool. Anyway, I had enough macaroni elbow um, pasta in there to make this. Okay, there we go. Oh yeah, let me get some, I'm gonna do two green onions. So, okay, we're almost done because I really need to get this chicken on. It's gonna take me at least a half hour to grill and that'll be just enough time to get the, uh, uh, to finish up the salad, have that sit for a little bit. So some of the seasonings, the mayo, the sour cream, whatever you're making your dressing for your uh, macaroni salad to kind of mingle, to kind of like become friends. And also a chance for it just to, just to chill just slightly. These types of salads are better chilled a little bit. I think some of the flavors. Okay, there we go. I hope this is enough. I'm gonna go ahead and slice this up, the egg. <gasps> See, look at that, steamed. No, none of that. I didn't overdo it. I, there's, these are only uh, two eggs. I steamed them maybe, I uh, let them boil for like maybe a minute, turn off the heat or turn the heat off and just let it steam. And look at that, it's perfect. And when I say let them steam, I was able to put this little basket in my little saucepan here, and it wasn't touching the bottom, and that was enough. Oh, I love steaming eggs now to make hard boiled eggs. And I think macaroni salad for some of the ingredients sometimes it's very similar, oops, to um, potato salad. But of course, one's macaroni, one's potatoes, totally different textures. Okay, we're almost done here. We're gonna get going on the dressing here. Okay, one more. Oh, 
want, you know, I don't want to fine chop the egg, but I also don't want big chunks either because everything else was cut up and diced up into, you know, so you can get a little bit of everything as you eat the macaroni salad. Okay, here we go on the egg. So let's get going on the dressing. Okay, we're gonna get ready here and make the dressing. One thing um, I have seen in macaroni salad too, uh, sometimes how my mom made it was to put in uh, a little bit of grated medium uh, cheddar cheese, uh, some black olives. Uh, so macaroni salad, just like paved potato salad, is really what you like, but just make sure the combination is what you like, you think everyone else is gonna like, and goes with the dressing. So you back off on some of the heat, like either Dijon mustard or red pepper flakes, or maybe you use white wine vinegar or red wine vinegar or apple cider vinegar. They all have slight variations. So basically macaroni salad is really what you wanna make of it. But this is my take on today's macaroni salad. So um, I'll try and remember to put some of those options just in case. Um, oh, by the way, I have allergies going on right now. That's why my voice probably sounds different. I might be sniffling or something. It comes and goes. My eyes have been itching. It happens certain parts of the day, not all day. And I really don't take anything for it unless I'm absolutely miserable because I don't know. I grew up like, my body's tough. I can do this. It can fight it off. It just takes a little bit longer. So anyway, okay, I don't know. Cup, maybe three quarters of a cup, somewhere around there for ma mayo for a half a pound of... So use your favorite mayo. I'm gonna add in a little bit of sour cream. A little bit of sour cream in here. A quarter of a cup maybe. We should really get this red onion out of the way. Okay, here's a little clean dish. I'll just put it in there. So we got the sour cream. Going with my local Tillamook. Now the thing I debated on the mustard for this, I really like spicy brown mustard or uh, stone ground mustard. I don't use so much as Dijon, D Dijon, Dijon, Dijon mustard. But I thought with this, with some of the sweet pickles and not wanting the macaroni salad too sweet, I thought a little zing of Dijon mustard would go well. So, Maybe one teaspoon. I'm gonna taste this, obviously, before I mix it in there. I'm gonna do a splash. I've got uh, apple cider vinegar here. For some reason, I don't have red vinegar in my, um, <coughs> I don't have red vinegar in my pantry. So, you know, just a little dab. Or if you even wanted to use lemon juice, hang on. I told you sinus, it's terrible. Uh, so a little bit of cider in here. Let me mix this around. Oh yeah. I think this will be good. I'm gonna do a little bit of salt. And a little bit of pepper. So, uh, the vinegar, I mean, I don't want to do quite a quarter of a cup, so tablespoon, maybe two. Because you definitely don't want your thing too runny either. That's no fun. You want the dressing to stick to the pasta. Okay, I think that's good. Oh, yeah, I hope. Oh, dear me. Okay, what other stuff do I have in here? I'm gonna do a little bit of garlic powder. <coughs> I'm gonna do a few, <coughs> sorry. <coughs> I'm 
do red pepper flakes. I got my mustard in there. I am going to go ahead and do a little bit of dill. I don't know. I kind of like dill and something like this. I know I don't have um, I'm going to use this spoon. Wow, not bad. Dijon mustard really gives a little, little kick to this. I don't know. I like it. I mean, let me think. Do I want a little dash of sugar in here? Mmm. You know what? I'm not going to do sugar in here. If you want to use sugar in here, just to balance out some of the tartness from the, the vinegar and the Dijon mustard, go ahead. But be very careful, unless you like a little bit of a sweet dressing for your macaroni. I don't, so I think I'm gonna leave it like this. Okay, here we go. I'm going to use all of this dressing and hopefully it's not too much. And you know me, I like to really scrape out the bowl because, you know, why, why leave it all in the bowl when it can go on the food? Okay. Oh yeah, this was definitely plenty. I'd probably back off on a half a pound. Probably back off just a tad on the mayo or the sour cream. But no, I, th I think this is good. Because the one thing you don't want either is... Um, dry macaroni, like a dry dressing in the macaroni. And the one thing I love about macaroni and cheese, um, I remember making this into adding a little bit of protein and adding some tuna fish to it. Some really good quality canned tuna fish. So now you got, uh, what, tuna macaroni salad? Yeah, tuna macaroni salad. It's not hot like you would do like a tuna casserole or something like that. But tuna macaroni salad, I mean, I don't know. For me, this is like my Midwest. This is growing up. Okay, let's incorporate all these veggies in here. Sweet pickles, radishes, green onions, little red peppers, celery. And I figured Chris is going to help me eat this. So I'm not going to put any olives in it. I like olives more in a Mediterranean dish or something like that, but see, this gives just enough of a color to it. Oh yeah, see? Enough of a color to it, and I'm, now I'm gonna incorporate the eggs. Oops. Okay. Now this hasn't obviously had a chance to sit, but I don't want to bang too hard on this bowl because this is a nice pottery bowl that I got at the local farmer's market because they have a lot of crafty vendors there. So this is was one of their bowls and I just love it. <clears throat> okay. I'm just gonna clean up the edge of this. <laughs> there we go. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and chop up some fresh parsley and then I'll give this a taste. Okay, I might have just gotten myself into trouble because I went out to my herb garden. Of course, I never have enough. That's why I supplement it because it hasn't grown <laughs> yet um, at the farmer's market, but I went out there and I saw the herbs and I'm like, oh, maybe a little bit of basil, maybe a little bit of thyme would go well in here. 
Obviously, you don't have to do that, but I am. These are just a few leaves, maybe four leaves of basil. I'm just gonna kind of um, ribbon cut these. Just, oh, sorry, I got to thinking. I'm a little late on getting this chicken on the grill. So I'm just gonna put some on there. I got it just a little bit of time. Incorporate that. And then it gets that little green in there. You got the little red from the pepper. Daisy May, what's going on? She must be hearing people outside. I don't know. Okay. Oops, wait a minute. I was gonna use that spoon, but I think I tasted the salad with it. Okay. And then I'm just gonna chop up some parsley here and just garnish it. You can just put a couple of sprigs of parsley on here if you wanna garnish it at all. But before I put this on top, I'm gonna taste the salad, at least as of right now. Now, when it gets a little bit cold, that might change everything, but so far, I'm loving it. Okay, so. Oh, maybe I should end this by saying, you can get this recipe over at Amy Roloff's Little Kitchen on my YouTube channel, so I'd love it if you subscribe. But this is just a variation of a macaroni salad that I have made multiple times with my kids growing up on the farm and having so many of their friends and families and picnics out there. Now I get to do it with Chris and some of our friends. And, but this makes macaroni salad to me, it's like potato salad. It makes great, um, uh, what is that word? Why can't I remember that word when everyone gathers and brings a dent? Potluck, oh my goodness, potluck. Makes for a great summer potluck, picnics, gatherings, family reunions, holidays, anyway, macaroni salad. So give it a try. I should have cut up that uh, egg mm. I think that's really good. I'm just gonna do just a dash of a little more salt. And just a dash of a little more pepper. I could add a little more pepper flakes in here, but I don't think I want to do that. Well, I could. Why not? Or another thing you can do too is sprinkle it with hot paprika or your famous hot sauce. But that will definitely turn the dressing into a different color, I think, because most likely a lot of that stuff is orange color. <laughs> Okay, I think we are ready to go, people. Oops, let's get that in here. <coughs> oh dear, Chris is home and I forgot to... Anyway, here we go. So check it out, macaroni salad, Amy Roloff's Little Kitchen. So thank you for being with me in my little kitchen. So keep gathering around the table with family and friends and have a wonderful summer or any time of the year. <laughs>